to review the RNZAF's Queen's Birthday Colour Parade is the retiring Chief of Air Staff, Air Vice Marshal Calder. This year, the annual transfer of the Queen's Colour is from Fenorpai to Wigram. Despite the threatening weather, an estimated crowd of 5,000 turn out to watch the ceremony at Wigram Station. Wigram receives the Queen's Colour from the Fenorpai Colour Party. Having taken the colour, the Wigram contingent moves smartly back to the flight for the march past. Parading the Queen's colour has added significance for the RNZAF this year. 1962 marks their 25th anniversary and it's the last time the salute will be taken by the present Chief of Staff, Air Vice Marshal Calder, who's retiring shortly. <laughs> Queen Street, Auckland, at the start of this year's festival. There are no flags, no bands, but it's not that sort of festival. Aucklanders have in store 15 concerts, two operas, 10 exhibitions and a film festival. Down at the Prince's Wharf Shed, before the official opening of the Maritime Exhibition, the ever-present small boy is trying out the Ardmore Engineering School's hovercraft. In the Town Hall, the floral art ladies are putting the last touches to their displays. And in the Town Hall's garden-like interior, distinguished authoress Miss Nio Marsh declares the 14th Festival of Arts open. At the museum, there's an exhibition of primitive sculpture. Dominating it is a seven-foot wooden lady from the Caroline Islands with figure and features of austere simplicity. On the walls are Pacific and African masks that only need the beat of drums to set them moving. Among the art gallery exhibitions is one that gives an entertaining look at past history, the Minhinic cartoons. For over 30 years, he's kept the top half of the North Island laughing. Remember life in Auckland, hypertension department? Or sometimes I feel these Takapuna types don't cooperate as they might. Or it's in the income tax building. and the crowds are filling the theatre and concert hall. With a wealth of talent from home and abroad, bookings are heavy and Aucklanders are enjoying their 14th successful festival. In the extreme southwest of New Zealand is Fiordland National Park. Glaciers of the Ice Age carved out its valleys, its lakes and its sounds and left behind landscapes and seascapes renowned for their grandeur. Cruise liners in Milford Sound glide close to the shore. The cliff sides plunge straight down for hundreds of fathoms and tower up for thousands of feet. At Milford's head is the hotel, 11 miles in from the open sea. Away from the hotel stretch the mountain peaks standing above landlocked water, a scenic pattern so typical of this region. It's at Lake Manapuri or Lake Tiana that most New Zealanders have their first glimpse of Fiordlands Park. They're seldom disappointed. The exploring holiday maker moves up the Eglinton, probably the most beautiful valley in all New Zealand.
Hamilton and Hollywood wind their way into the heart of the mountains, into an area easily accessible, yet so vast that you begin to think that no one else has been here before you. In three million acres, you feel rather insignificant. Sutherland Falls, one of the world's highest. Falling, cascading, tumbling, nearly 2,000 feet from Lake Quill to the Arthur River. Like all our national parks, this is a sanctuary where birds live little disturbed by man's intrusion. With a mounted specimen, a park's ranger talks to a busload of children about the rare kakapo. On the mountain tops lives the mountain parrot, the kia, cheeky, inquisitive, and unlike the kakapo, numerous. They're always keen to meet people, particularly when there's a chance of a handout. Summer is the time to follow bush track and mountain trails still deeper into Fiordland. The tracks lead over the mountain passes to the edges of deep valleys that give this park its feeling of immensity, of remoteness. The roads lead to Milford. They lead to comfort, to days of relaxation and excursions across the sound. Such is Fiordland in all its beauty, and we are fortunate to be able to call this park our own.